So, I went to see War for the Planet of the Apes, but in getting ready to do my review for it, I realized that I had never reviewed the previous film, Dawn of the Planet of the Apes, which is odd, as I had reviewed all of the rest. I just never got around to it for whatever reason. So, this is going to be a double review handling both films. First, Dawn of the Planet of the Apes. The movie starts out with Caesar and his society of apes. Nearly a decade after the outbreak of simian flu drastically increased the intelligence of apes and started killing off humans. Caesar and his apes mostly live in peace, contemplating their place in the world and whether or not humans even still exist. A question that is answered rather quickly as a human enters their territory and in fear accidentally shoots one of the young apes. This creates a ripple effect in their society. The humans are survivors of the simian flu outbreak that are trying to get society back on its feet and they need to do this, they need access to a hydroelectric dam that lies within the apes' territory. The apes distrust the humans due to their initial violence of the first encounter, though both sides try to work towards a peaceful resolution and possible cohabitation. There's factors on both sides that make things extremely tense, such as some of the humans refusing to see the apes as anything more than animals, or even outright blaming them for the simian flu outbreak. On the ape side, there's Koba, who had been horrifically tortured by humans in the previous movie and can't let go of the hatred he has for them. Caesar wants to show strength, but would rather have peace, which makes some of the apes question his leadership. The movie is tense for the entirety of its runtime, which is both a spectacular triumph and it's also completely exhausting. You might need to take a nap after watching this one. Dawn of the Planet of the Apes is beautifully shot and has amazing sets, and of course, the special effects are great, with the same superb ape effects from Rise of the Planet of the Apes, though on a greater scale. Rise was, in many ways, a breath of fresh air, as the first attempt at rebooting the series had gone so horribly awry. It was wonderful to get what was, at the time, the best film in the series since the original, and I dare to say that Dawn is even better. I would even say that it might be even on footing with the original Planet of the Apes. The only thing that stops it from being better is that it doesn't work as well on its own as a singular film. It is the second part of a series. Dawn of the Planet of the Apes is a wonderful movie, and I give it a 10 out of 10. So, now we have War for the Planet of the Apes. You might want to stop listening now if you haven't seen Dawn of the Planet of the Apes. While I won't spoil this new film to talk about war, I'm forced to spoil the ending of Dawn, so you've been warned. Anyway... Despite Caesar's best attempts, at the end of Dawn, the apes found themselves in a bad situation, though they had survived the battle in San Francisco, and the traitorous Koba was killed by Caesar. The humans who Koba had attacked had managed to get off a distress signal to nearby military forces, which starts an all-out war between apes and humans. As War for the Planet of the Apes begins, the war has been going on for some time. Some soldiers find and attack Caesar's base, but the apes win the battle and take the surviving soldiers before Caesar, who decides to spare them to pass on a message to their leader, the colonel, that the apes did not start the war, the ape who did was dead, and they wanted peace. However, the colonel is hell-bent on destroying every ape, and in a second attack, the apes suffer heavy casualties that leave the entire society fractured. This is also complicated by the fact that some of the apes, many of them former followers of Koba, have joined the humans and worked for them. Caesar has the survivors, including his young son Cornelius, move to a new location that had been previously scouted out, but he doesn't go with them. Instead, he leads a small party of followers to attack the humans and kill the colonel. Along the way, they pick up a young human girl who they give the name Nova, and an intelligent ape who wasn't part of Caesar's society. These discoveries lead us to realize two things. One is that the simian flu outbreak had affected apes all over the world, not just the ones in San Francisco, and the virus itself had mutated. Humans that were immune to the virus are now being regressed to a primitive state, unable to speak or use higher reasoning. When I went to see this film, I wondered what its purpose was. Rise of the Planet of the Apes was a reboot, but at the same time was also kind of a remake of Conquest of the Planet of the Apes. And Dawn was sort of a remake of Battle for the Planet of the Apes. They weren't exactly the same, a lot was changed, but you could see the trappings and tropes of Conquest and Battle in Rise and Dawn. The next movie, chronologically, would be the original Planet of the Apes, but instead of jumping right into that story, they've given us what I've come to think of as a very necessary middle step, showing us exactly not just how the apes rose, but how the humans fell. Sure, the simian flu wiped out many of them, but now we have an explanation as to how they lost the ability to speak. Familiar names like Nova and Cornelius also tie us into that, though in the original, Caesar was Cornelius' son rather than the other way around, but the original also involved time travel and wormholes. 
War for the Planet of the Apes is very good, mostly due to the acting and the atmosphere, though I think it's a step below Dawn. Dawn of the Planet of the Apes is just the better movie in every way, but War is an exciting film that does a lot of things wonderfully. It's a transitional film in the series and is in a lot of ways fairly transparent in its social commentary, but at no point is it not entertaining, and it is at many times very poignant, something that this entire new series has done very well throughout the course of all three movies. I think that overall, I like Dawn better, but I would put this one right up there with Rise of the Planet of the Apes. I give War for the Planet of the Apes a 9 out of 10.